Good morning and welcome back to my garden in Essex in England. Richard, have a quick hello because we haven't seen you for a while. I'm still here. He's still here. Still in one piece. <laughs> okay. That's it. You can go now. That's it, I'm go. Oh. Anyway, see you later. See you later. See you later. Welcome back to my garden in Essex, England. Today is a beautiful spring day. It's quite early. It's a Saturday morning, about nine o'clock. It's 12 degrees Celsius, which I think is about 51 Fahrenheit. But today it's supposed to warm up a lot. Yesterday was lovely. And it's supposed to get to 20 Celsius, which I think is around about 70 Fahrenheit. And uh, so I wanted to get these jobs done. Now I have, um, spent about an hour this morning in my dressing gown, as you do, mentally moving plants around. It's a great time to move plants anyway. The reason being is because round the back of my shed that there was a lot of obelisks and containers and everything which have now been moved into Woodland Courtyard. And by the way, thank you for your lovely comments about Woodland Courtyard. And I must just also report that the fairy lights on the fake panel at the front of the potting bench, they do come on every night, so that's been a delight. I uh, found two more obelisks which I wanted to use, so I've been dotting them around the garden and I thought I had the perfect solution. So here are the two obelisks and this is where I decided they would go. One, as you can see, is here and then one, the taller one, which actually when you push it into the ground it will go lower than that was going to go there. The decision was made, or so I thought, because then I went out to get some plants, come back with some beautiful plants. After researching last night on YouTube, they are going to get huge and massive. So this idea is not going to work. Let me show you the plants. So this one is beautiful. It's a star jasmine and I thought that I could put that in the taller obelisk and keep it contained and uh, keep chopping it off to make it a manageable size but when I've looked at photos and videos it can cover a whole wall it can look spectacular and I have to bear in mind that I have that van der Waals pine there it's going to get huge so I don't think that's a very good option so it likes to be in the sunshine on a southern facing wall ideally this is my southern facing wall that's the south up there but in 10 years I know that's a long time but it soon goes it can grow 20 meters tall which is 70 feet by two and a half meters wide which is eight feet so that is not going to do very well there and it can't reach its spectacularness. It's an evergreen, but also it turns a beautiful autumnal foliage all through the autumn and the winter. So I think that will be lovely. So that's not going in that obelisk. And then this one that I bought, it's very beautiful. It's called a Solanum, a Crispin Glasnevin. That's a climber as well and it's also called the Chilean potato tree. It has a beautiful rich purple blue flowers with orange centers and it goes from midsummer all the way to mid autumn. So that sounds beautiful, but it's a vigorous scrambler. This is also suitable for a south facing wall or west facing. And the height and spread in 10 years for this one is six meters by six meters, 20 foot by 20 foot. So, this I think I'm going to contain it in the larger obelisk. Put some wires around it, make sure it can't escape too much so it's quite contained. So I think we'll give that one a go. Yes, Lottie? It's not as straightforward as that because in order to put these plants where I now think they are going to look their best, it means a little bit of moving around. Now you can see my olive tree, which is in a bottomless pot and it's kind of leaning a bit anyway. So I've been thinking before all this happened that I think the olive tree would look really nice here. I'm going to have the taller obelisk here with the selenum and as I say, we'll keep it contained and I will put the smaller obelisk just to one side of it 
because I've put the smaller obelisk all over the place in the garden and I just don't like it anywhere. And then the star jasmine, I think, will look beautiful if I plant it kind of there, let it trowel. It can go all over the place. It can go up the wall. It can grow to its heart's content. It will be evergreen and there'll be beautiful flowers and apparently they smell absolutely divine. So I think I'll put the star jasmine there. So we'll have a green wall there and then we'll have this beautiful one day green wall there and it could go up there. I have to make sure it doesn't, they're my neighbor's garages to make sure that it doesn't go in their gutters or anything like that. So that is the plan B which has taken me about an hour of thinking and drinking coffee in my dressing gown. Okay, the hole is dug here. There was no way of digging that hole without having my backside facing the camera. So I'm saving you from that uh, view. So now it's a case of getting the olive tree out of the pot. No idea, hopefully it will be easy. It's, as I say, it's a bottomless pot. I don't know if the roots will have grown down into the ground. No idea. Anyway, let's give that a go, see what happens. Wish me luck. These are my little things that I painted last year when I had my painting spree. Probably heavy. But it's in there solidly. So as I say, it's actually worked out very well because by just putting the pot down, it's in no worse position than it was. And I haven't disturbed the root ball. So serendipity, one of my favorite words. Let's just tackle this side now. So I'm gonna plant the new solenum over there. Then I'll put the big tall obelisk around it. Okay, I had forgotten. There's concrete under here. And uh, it seems to be quite, it's all there, there's concrete. There's concrete there, concrete there. Concrete, concrete, concrete. Concrete. So the whole thing, has concrete about that far down. Let me think for a moment. Okay, we've hit a snag because I've realised there's concrete down there about that deep and it's a big, I'd forgotten. So my poor Ollie, just as well I've moved it. Yeah, it's about that deep. So you could plant annuals there. So I'm not going to be happy to have that there with a nice plant that's going to be very healthy. Oh, what to do, Lottie? Come up here. You need to think. The thought I had was maybe I could move this seat. We could redesign this little area with the seat over there. Let's have a think. I need to stand back and look at it. Sorry, Lottie. Oh, that, that's fine. 
I think that's nice. It, Do you? You've got a reflection of yeah. your obelisk. Okay. Good. So gentle. Let's see what's on. Nice. Nice. Good. That's great. It's not straight. That bottom to all shoe. Yeah. Bottom the other way. No, no, too much. That's it. Lovely. Okay. Oh my goodness. Well, I meant to plant one plant and uh, yeah, it escalated. No, it looks, I Do think like that, it? that looks far better. Oh, wonderful. Good. Good, good, good. Right, famous last words. Let's do a quick bit of gardening. All that's left is for me to plant this beautiful star jasmine behind me. So I'm going to plant that there. And then I'll take you a tour of the new revamped fountain garden and container garden area. And so, Two hours later, it was supposed to be a quick job, planting two quick new climbers, which escalated into far more than I had considered, but it's always fun anyway. So this is the bed here, the star jasmine. You can see I've put it here, and there were three kind of tendrils. So as you can see, I've trained, trained in or clipped one to the left one straight up and one to the right. So we'll see what happens with those. That's my Trachycarpus fortunii. We have a lot of beautiful colour hookahs. We have lavender around the base of the pot. And then we have blue star junipers, which are beginning to turn bluer because of the sun shining. So that's good. We have, um, what's that called? A Euonymus, now what's that called? Oh, I forgot. I'll put the name on the screen with some ivy. That is my little Miss Ruby Budlia. That actually, yes, that's a weed, so that needs to go. And along here, that, that's my Chinese plumbago. We have a few campanulas in the back, a lot of weeds. Yes, look at the size of these weeds. I will do it. Beautiful apple blossom. First time ever apple blossom on this tree. And I moved this to this spot last year sometime. It was only eight foot to the left. It's That's all it's moved. And then we have a U here. That's a U. That's my Van der Waals pine, which will get big. A Schneebichen rose, lots of buds on that, that's a climber. And that's a japonica with lots of beautiful new leaves emerging. One of my all time favorites. These two down here are Ilex Stokes, which were around the green container. They were the only two survivors. This is my Formium brown sugar. And then of course we've moved the olive, which I think looks nice there. We have the new Chilean potato tree, which should have beautiful purple flowers. And the chair is in the middle. So I have a slightly different vantage point now from this chair. Come and see the difference, Lottie. Ready? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm at a rather jaunty angle now. And the ironic thing of the whole process of the moving of everything was because I didn't know where to put this small obelisk. And I think it's going to stay. Well, this is what goes on while I'm gardening. Richard playing in his man cave. And we're going to show you because he just showed me one. And I found it very interesting of what you're doing, Rich. Well, I'm re-gripping my golf clubs, or e putting new grips on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeanette locked the procedure. <laughs> huh. 
Yeah. So, yeah. first thing is, put the gripper on there and put in the vise. Square the head up, put that in the vise. And what, uh, what number iron is this oh, one? Oh, this one's five. A is five? It? Is that a good one? Is that an often used? Yeah. Yeah. Just making sure it's square. That's it. Now, what I'm going to do now. It doesn't look square to me. Okay. Right. Now I've got to cut off the old grip. And how often do you need to do this, Richard? Well, you should, obviously. Every season? Well, it depend, depending on how, many, how often one plays. Mm -hmm. Probably every six months. Oh my goodness. But the first time I done this with the other when I first re gripped the clubs. Yeah. It took me days. Days? Why? Oh it was just having the neck. Oh. Now, now you have experience. Mm, you get the new grip. Put that in there. What is it? That's just a T. Okay. You, you'll see why it's plugged off. Lottie's crying. Because she, she finds it's very dull. Yeah. Now I'm just going to mark the length. <laughs> so I, I know how far to push it on. Okay. You always know how far to push it, don't you? Oh, I do. Push your line. I always push it too far. Okay, yeah. Now this is a double-sided sticky tape. Okay. Right, so... Place this, overlap the end by that quarter of an inch. Okay. Dottie, stop complaining. And you stick it on the club. Yeah. Dotty. So I won't be long. Stick it up and you stick that round. Got all the shoot all the way around. Let's just to overlap slightly so just bit that bit off. Dotty. Mm -hmm. At the end, you just put it into the club. Right. Stops the water getting in. Oh. Now that's sticky. Okay. So what you do then? This is a like a white spirit. It's a solvent. Mm -hmm. Pour some in the grip. What does that do? That obviously. When you're pushing the grip on, it slides, it helps it slide over the sticky bit. Oh. So you just line it like that. Then you pour it on the sticky bit. That just. So you pour it all out again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you just pour it? Oh no, I see, yeah. And then put, it slides on. It's like a dream with a slight bit of effort. Oh, oh that's a oh, rich. Not oh. Okay, perfect. That's it. And thank you for your patience, Lottie. And that's it. Another one, two, three, four, five, another seven to go. I should have a cup of tea before then. Shouldn't I? Anyway, this is Richard, the enthusiastic golfer. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Jeanette, I'm the enthusiastic gardener. Today is just gorgeous. So I hope it's nice where you are. That's it. Have fun in your gardens. Take care, everyone. Bye.